Hello everyone, thanks for joining me, Lisa O'Brien, uh, for another week of tips and tricks that I have accumulated over my many years of being a professional artist and illustrator. This week um, we are going to um, just work on lining in the painting that we did last week, which I mentioned, but if that's no interest to you, uh, you can skip ahead. I think it's about six minutes in, I've, I've put it in the after the intro. And I hope you enjoy it. I really hope you're being creative and that in some way I'm making it a bit easier for you to start your watercolour journey, your, your painting journey. Okay, let's get into this week's lesson. I line my work in um, at least half an hour after it's completely dry. My go-to pens, my art line, which bleeds the least and is most water resistant. Um, also a gel roller pen because it has such a beautiful flow, but this one will bleed if the paper is even the slightest bit damp. I do like to use um, those though, they've got a really good flow. Also here I've got a Faber-Castell Pit pen, which is really lovely, especially I'm a, a fashion illustrator as well, so using a sepia tone, one with a nice flexible tip is always really good. It gives you that very varied line thickness. Also sometimes for softness I'll use a grey, so that's basically an art line with a slightly thicker end. Now, as I said before, I usually wait at least half an hour. I'm going to start, I'm left-handed, so I'm starting up the top and making sure that I work from the right-hand side first, back to the left, just in case you ever smudge your hand on your artwork. With the gel roller pen, that's a risk because it is so fluid coming out of the tip. So even though I have a little tremor in my hand, um, this technique is good for me, especially because I've got a tremor in my hand, um, because you don't need that perfectly straight line. In fact, that stiffens up the artwork. So the main thing here to do is really be aware of where you want your line to start and stop. One really good tip is to um, draw some light pencil lines if you're unsure. I can do this just cold with a black pen because I've done it hundreds of times so I've got experience and that leads to confidence but if you've done a lovely watercolor that you're happy with you want to line it in it's an extremely nerve-wracking experience to get out a, a marker that you cannot rub out and draw over your artwork with the risk of perhaps making lines that you're not happy with so I really appreciate and remember that fear um, and that then can tighten you up and make you do marks that you don't like. Um, so what I would suggest is even start doing your line work in a pencil, a charcoal pencil or a soft pencil like a 4B or a, a 3B and do a few dummy paintings, paintings that you, you're purposefully not in love with, like my one on the left is my um, tighter painting, so I wouldn't want to keep that painting for anything. Um, so start on ones that you don't like, that you can get some experience with. Now here, the important thing is that you get your perspective right in your artwork, but you can correct it a little bit um, with the line work, and you can also muck it up a little bit with line work. So be, be careful of checking with your vanishing points. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want me to touch base with perspective, because I've had 25 years as a perspective artist, uh, one, two and three point perspective with shadows and reflections as well. Uh, it's pretty much my forte actually. Uh, so I was an app architectural illustrator with geometric, sorry, geographic, gee whiz, I did it all over the place. <laughs> so with this um, wiggly line, I call it, it, it's just, it's character, it gives character. And you'll find that the, the more squiggles and random marks you can make, the better. In this instance, this style of painting that we've done suits this, this loose line work. 
So here in this instance, I could cross over to my non-dominant hand and make some even more random marks because I have zero control or very little control with my non-dominant hand. So I'm doing squiggles for a shrub. I don't want to make the same mark over and over again. It might stiffen things up. Um, so practice on things like shrubbery and foliage where you can muck up a bit and go too heavy and you can get away with it. It's the lines on the building um, and vertical and, and horizontal lines of structure that you really need to consider because if you have walls that are really crooked and you don't want them crooked, um, the line work obviously is going to make that stand out. Um, the other thing I would say is be really prepared to think about where you want heavy line and where you want to leave some space. So the character comes with not lining in everything. I'll zoom in at the end of this and you can see areas, especially along the roof and the front where the sun is hitting the building. You just don't want solid lines there. But yeah, with balustrading, perhaps, you know, take a bit more care, not, not as messy as what I've just done. Or maybe that's just what you want. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now on to the next part of today's lesson, which I will follow through with some future lessons on. Today what I thought I'd do, go through with you is just how I do watercolour people. So you really want to go back to my egg tutorials to look at just a normal head. But this is general and this is to add into paintings. Now I don't join the head with the neck. I just do, think of an upside down shot glass. So that is basic. Remember the top of the legs is always about halfway from the ground. But this is more of a general lesson and the arms literally go down mid thigh. So there's the knee, mid thigh. But to generally get used to this shape is what I want you to do. So we're going to add these in over, over the lessons, put some little scenes together and some crowds and things. If someone's walking, I tend to just do something like this. I'm going to start colouring soon without too much more prep, but I wanted to show you that basic shape. So remember, I'll draw this quite heavily. Egg, glass, upside down glass, down to the ground and we're looking at this here being halfway halfway ground top of the head that's all you really need to know for now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wet all of this hopefully you can see this I might tint the water a little bit I'm going to wet all of this area and outside of it. Okay. Now, don't add colour for you for doing it, but see how I've missed places as well? And I'm not really doing the heads yet, I'm just doing this kind of blobby shape. What I'm doing now is I'm going to go into my burnt sienna. Actually, I'll, I'll grab this burnt sienna just here. And I'm just going to swipe and by adding lots of little legs back in here because I'm going wet into wet there that's all getting faded then I might do a few here where it's a little bit more dry a little bit less damp more dry but for now a few little faces back in here, shorter people. That's all I'm going to be going with. Now it's time to put clothes on them. So you want your page still to be wet. And then it's a matter of thinking about a collar or an opening at the front, long sleeves, etc. but not doing the whole thing. See how I've generally made shoulder shapes, maybe a collar, that's it. I want to let the paint run out and basically I want that paint to create its own little shape. 
because I have the scale and the shape pretty much on par with what a person is, the brain will actually help you to make up what doesn't look right or what's missing. Now, I might re-wet that because I've been talking. Um, it's a bit too dry now, so I'm just re-wetting, re-wetting. And a bit of blue back here, someone wearing jeans back there. See their nonsensical marks. And I just used a, uh, a Prussian blue there. Now I'm going to go with just a burgundy colour. Someone might have, you know, some stripes. Someone can be in like an orangey shirt or dress, maybe. Leave gaps. That's the whole thing about this, is to leave gaps. You want there to be a space for the brain to make up things that it's not quite getting. Now, could that be a child? Yes, it could be. Now we might put some little bits of hair, handbag, handbag. People walking the other way, so the back of someone's head. And here we've got now the hair can join. We don't need the neck yet. The hair can come down. Maybe someone's got short hair and Sunny's on. As um, someone's wearing maybe a purple cap. And you want there to be weird things that are kind of inexplicable because believe it or not, your brain will make sense of it for you. If I put a funny shape in here, suddenly it's someone's leg in shadow. If I put a line across there, it's someone's arm. And then one of the last things I do is go in with either white or black, or white's not showing up too well here, I haven't got gouache, I'll go in with uh, the black. And just dots really, um, again inexplicable little things that your brain, your brain literally fights to make sense of this. So if you can imagine this is a wet New York street and there's just people walking down the sidewalk uh, on a rainy day. So, I hope that's a fun little thing for you to try. Don't get too caught up in the specifics of this. Try to keep it an egg. It's too, it's too even formative. No neck. And look how generally I'm putting that shape in. But already your brain, you know, sees a body. You, the trick is let the, pa let the wet paper do work for you. Don't be trying to, it's not a jigsaw puzzle where every every piece has to be collected. Um, you know, you might see, oh yeah, I see a girl wearing, um, you know, a red top and a green skirt. Well, who's to say that's not a green skirt, but the sun's ripped some of the colour out, you know, 
And yeah, her, her head's pretty far off her body. But adding um, a neck doesn't have to happen until right at the end if it suits your drawing. So now to make this relevant, I'm just going to go back into our other painting that we did last week, the one that I didn't line in, and add some little people in based on what I've just shown you today. So thank you very much for joining me again this week. I hope that's been helpful and fun and I look forward to seeing you next time.